What would you tell your 12 year old self? Suck it up, princess. Really? Life's gonna get worse. What would I tell a 12 year old Thomas? He wouldn't listen. No, I wouldn't have. I was hard. I was, getting... <laughs> I was the worst. He as would a have child. kicked you in the ankles and told you to piss off. That's true. No, I'd actually say just marry somebody that has the same shoe size as you so I can double your shoe wardrobe. Every evening in Australia... Oh, my God, not these psychos oh, again. Oh ..more than four million of us choose to spend the night in front of the telly. It's the insidious subtlety, isn't it? Exactly. Very true. But have you ever wondered what other people are watching? They've all lost the plot completely. I can't wait to watch the rest of that. Find out what people thought about what was on in the last seven days. Ah! We say it's all shit, but we gotta watch it. God help us all. This week, the real life melodrama continued on Married at First Sight. What am I gonna do when this is over? Oh, you'll actually have a laugh. David Attenborough captured our attention. <gasps> oh, gotcha. And Australian story challenged our hearts. You can't have one rule for one person and one rule for another. How do you systematically grade people's desperation? Come here when I'm sneezing if I'm <laughs> sneezing. Please don't spread your germs on me. <laughs> well, you've got such a weak immune system. You know, you pick up germs. Oh, no, I can so understand that. I'm the healthiest person on God's earth. You just got over a cold that you had for, for three months. Off. Just behave yourself. If I got married at first sight, I'd walk down the aisle like this. Big, Hello, you don't. Week, a bit don't. Next week. After eight weeks on Sunday, Nine's runaway success kicked off with the final dinner party. It's been eight weeks already. I love this show. God, what am I going to do when this is over? Oh, you'll actually have a life. With half the couples already divorced, the remaining pairs appear to have little in common, apart from a mutual dislike and shared mistrust. It's going to be a showdown tonight. The last time we saw Michelle and Jesse, Jesse was desperately trying to convince Michelle how much he adores her. I mean, he opened himself up. He exposed all his feelings. I know we were headed towards friendship. You know the problem? Jesse knows that he's batting well above his average. Yeah. I feel like he constantly has to prove himself to her. I think she's actually leading him on. I've seen the door, and for me to walk through it, oh, I need God. you to find it and walk through it with me. It's cute in the way that a five-year-old would express their feelings. Yeah. She doesn't want to be with you. But she's not opening that door. But they don't even, they have, don't even kiss. Jesse seems to be drinking quite a bit tonight. You're hot. <laughs> oh, God, he's gone. You know what? You said that to me before in the exact same context Jesse. after a few lines. You're hot. <laughs> but he doesn't know where he stands. He's not confident. How are the experts not saying that this isn't working? Also having a miserable time under yeah. the watchful eye of the experts are Nadia and Anthony. I'm just going to pack my bags right now and I'm just going to get on the next flight to Anthony's arms. Is that what happens? I would like to say to you, Nadia, that life's a fairy tale. No, I don't like him. He's a bit of a show pony. Well, this is the one we think is a weirder. Hello, Mick. They're all weird. Anyone that goes on the show is not normal. I'm not packing my bags for any less than love. They, like, want to make it work so that they look like they have a successful relationship. You need some carbs. You're feeling, you're feeling flat. That shoulder seems very cold. I think it's fair to say early on in this dinner party, we've got an issue with Nadia and Anthony. She's gone right off him. That's a massive shift to be acting like that. She's done, done. They'll be feeling some anxiety here tonight because this is the last time they'll be with their partner before oh, separating. Oh, oh. <laughs> she physically recoiled from She's him. Like oh, don't yeah. touch me. Oh, I really am concerned about that. <laughs> so that woman is so annoying. But before you part ways, we have planned one final task for you. Orgy. Each couple has been given a box of honesty questions that they must ask each other in front of the group. Oh, please. Let's go to Jesse. <laughs> How confident do you feel about our relationship? Not at all. Oh. Going back a week ago, I decided to open up. And in doing that, I started to see a door. Oh, that freaking door. Jeez. I'm leaving the door open. 
Someone hit him with the yeah, door. Slam that door on his head. I need you to walk through it with me. Oh, for God's sake. Who taught him this thought metaphor? They should be shot. Do you feel married? Um, no. Ooh. No. Oh. I never want to feel married. Just say, Jesse, I've stayed here with you because I want to get famous on TV. I feel committed to you because I said to you that I am committed to this relationship and I want to see it through. Oh, Michelle, you haven't liked Jesse since day one. She's dangling the carrot but not letting him eat the carrot. But, yeah, maybe there has been a bit of a wall. She's got a wall, he's got a door. Together they can build a house. OK, Nadia. Yes? Do you believe my feelings for you are 100% genuine? No. No? Not even close. Yeah, I do. Ah, bullshit. <laughs> uh, you're an idiot. I've done as much as I can to this point to show her how much she means to me, but she wants to hear those three words. What's those yes. three words? We are done. No I no want toast. Get out, please. Get out, please. <laughs> <laughs> I think the more important three words are credit card number. Oh, that's two words. I get the feeling that you're not prepared to really take that next step and fall in love, for example. You're waiting for me to jump, and then you'll jump with me. Or else, yep. run. He just hates losing. He just wants to win her. We decide everything together. Yeah, and we decide, and then we do what you want to do. That's right. All of our couples are looking at their partner tonight, thinking about this decision. For some of them, this is the end. Finale! Yeah. Finale next week? Yep. That, that is punishing, really. I think that's even worse than The Bachelorette. I want to do my scallops again. You just put five scallops in the shell, in the open shell. And then you put it under don't, the don't have to tell us how you do it. Do it. Pour a little bit of white wine into each shell. And then you mix up some breadcrumbs with... Um, oh, you, you're horrible. Are you guys hungry? Yeah! Jamie Oliver! I like Jamie. I bloody love Jamie Oliver. Really? Yeah. Uh, 15 minute meals. Do they I've actually made, take 15 minutes? I've made two of them and they took me 45 minutes each. This, however, isn't the show about 15 minute meals, nor the 30 minute meals, nor indeed the Naked Chef, School Dinners, Ministry of Food. There's so many in the Jamie franchise now, I can't keep up. Jamie's Kitchen, Jamie's Fish Supper, Jamie Cooks Summer, but Jamie and Jimmy's Food Fight Club, now on Lifestyle. Jamie and Jimmy, Food Fight Club. Sun's out. The other guy must be Jimmy, because he's Jamie and Jim... No shit, Sherlock. Each week, Jamie and his childhood friend, Jimmy, welcome a celebrity guest to help cook in their restaurant. Popping in for a cooking lesson, a Hollywood heartthrob. It's Orlando Bloom, everyone! The elf man himself. Do you think he's good looking? Girls? No way. Matt, I'm asking the girls. Oh, okay, sorry. How are you doing? Very well. You're South very ends. well. Sunny South Ends. He is so hot. He was married to Miranda Kerr. Oh, who's really? she? <laughs> who's he married to now? No one. He just broke up with Katy Perry. Oh, did he? Yeah, so now he's just going to move on to the next hottest girl he can find. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your life around food. It's not that better fantastic, or worse. i got to say. It's not, it's not fantastic. Isn't Orlando Bloom French? Bangers and mash, fish and chips. So you actually miss nah, he's American. I heard from a friend of yours uh, <laughs> that uh, you tried to cook um, a salmon steak once. <laughs> Semi in the nude. <laughs> Semi nude. What? Is he serious? So I threw it on and <laughs> it just exploded. He's always in the nude. Why? Even the photographers got him last year in the nude. Did they? Mm hmm. He's at the beach with Katy Perry and he's like on a paddleboard rowing. Naked peaches revealed in all the. Ooh. Uncensored pics of Orlando Bloom. So? Oh, fuck me drunk. Let's have Why? a look. We're knocking up a lamb tagine. Are you ready for a Bloom tagine? Oh, yeah. Paddle boarding. Okay, oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, Faye. It's, it's a whopper. Oh, it's show a me. fucking whopper. Your phone's bigger than mine. Oh, oh my god. Look at. Oh my god. Nah, let me have a look. Because you're going to take my phone off me. Let me have a look for. Jesus Christus. How's my action going? Perfect. Very, very good. It needs a good old pounding and a muddle. It's fucking huge. 
huge. Oh, my God. His name should be Orlando the Broom. Why the Broom? Don't worry about it. Miranda Kerr would have been well fed, huh? I thought that was his stick. Brilliant, brilliant. No, that's not his stick. That's his... You hungry? Yeah! I bet you they've seen the photo too and they don't know what to say to him. They're all salivating. I love Orlando when he's acting. Okay. Is it only the acting? So, um, I want you to get your hands around me and just rub it all over. There's lots of phallic what references in this show, isn't there? Like always put it in gently and flop it away from you. Just flop it away just from flop you. Flop it away from you. Now, there's a rule to live by. Do you do that? Do you flop it away from you or just flop it to you? What do you do? I'm not answering that. Oh, How, where did you find Oh, my that? God, look where, at all these. Where did you find those photos? Brother, enough talking. This is a little moment for me and you. Look at that. Oh, look at that. It just falls off. What do you reckon? Oh, looks so hard to me. <laughs> Be all over it. As Jamie watches on, the other guy, Jimmy, is preparing to show us his very own sausage. If you're going to treat yourself to a sausage, make sure it's a good one. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Jesus. For me, a really good sausage is a celebration of a well-reared, healthy pig. <laughs> <laughs> it's easier than you think to make the freshest, meatiest sausage you've ever tasted. If you want one of Jimmy's sausages, you just need to get some sausage casing, salt, pepper and... All you need are a few off-cuts of wood. ...various types of timber, a drain pipe, a saw, a drill, screws, safety glasses... What? The idea is to make a chamber to hold all your sausage meat. And what does he do with the bloody drill? Oh, I don't know. Nuts, bolts, a bolt driver, a downpipe end cap... Really simple, really easy to do. Is he serious? What is he doing? Glad wrap, brackets, breadcrumbs, a week off work and... pork. Yeah, this Cannibal. would be so much easier than going to the butchers. Here it comes, here it comes. You just need to be a carpenter. You need to be a carpenter and, mecha and a mechanic and a plumber. <laughs> Jesus. To make a sausage. So you need three degrees before you can do it. <laughs> now it's time for a room full of people to tuck into Jimmy's sausage and Orlando's shank. Get amongst it. Melt in the mouth meat. How's that going down? Liking it? Yeah, it melts in your mouth. This will be a great Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> She's disappointed it's lamb. <laughs> oh, yeah. How about Orlando Bloom? Round of applause, guys. Well done, Bloomy. Now yeah, take, take your pants off, take your pants off, take your pants off. Get them off, get them off. Do you want to see Orlando's dick? That's it. Do you like it? Yeah. <laughs> On our family road trips, I used to be sat in the middle because I had to split up Josh and Kelly and Josh would chant to Kelly when we were going through particular windy areas and go, bring it up, bring it up, carrots and all, and he would chant until she threw up. And then Mum had a mirror that was like this, and so she didn't have to turn around and yell at us. She would just be like, Josh, stop it. <laughs> and then she would put the mirror back down. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> oh, I like this show. Oh, Travel Guides. On Tuesday, Channel 9's Travel Guides were back for a spectacular Outback adventure. This will be interesting. They won't be ready for this. Did someone fart? Oh, oh no, not guide. these bogans again. See, I'd like to hang out with this family. This would be one of my favourite shows on TV, I think. Yeah. Viewers have landed in Darwin. The Aussies are going to Australia. Do you reckon they've blown the budget? To start a week-long budget camping adventure. <laughs> Looks like it. Our guides are hitting Crocosaurus Cove. What is Crocosaurus Cove? Australia's only croc dive. Why would anybody want to do this? I want to do that. Good luck, kids. Nice knowing you. Holy dooly. No way I would do this. What do you do? Is this real? Is he going to go in there? Yeah. It's fake. No, it's real. Would you do that? What is it? The crocs swim around you. You right? No. You'd be safe. How do you know? It's only plastic. Oh, here you guys. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of its head. I want to get in. What the bloody hell did you get in there? <laughs> no, please. I don't like it in here. I reckon the croc didn't well, like it either. Do do only two people get to do it out of family. It's a budget struggles again. Our guides have a 600-kilometre journey ahead of them over the next week. I love a good road trip. 
Driving is like my worst nightmare with kids. I got uh, left on the side of the road once. <laughs> Not by accident, like, get out. Get out. How far did they drive away? Far? I couldn't see you. <laughs> you wouldn't see too much. You'd see a lot. Just dirt and tree. Yeah, and kangaroos, and that's it. I find it quite a boring drive, to be honest. I would have to say that it's not exactly exhilarating. It's well. not like driving through the Swiss, Swiss Alps, is it? It's not like driving through the countryside of France. The landscape of Argentina was so beautiful. Yeah. Oh, ah, what was that? That was the bird. Remember when we used to go up to Marimbula and we used to count the roadkill as that a game? That was Dad's initiative and he made I loved us it. tally was... it. We tally used to how tally... many kangaroos and how many wombats. It was it was actually messed up. What's your map like was... now? Today, our travellers will be taking a two-hour cruise along the jaw-dropping Nitmaluk Gorge. That looks oh, gorgeous. Really <laughs> Don't shake it, fish. So, how many times do you think you need to go to the toilet in a two-hour river cruise, mate? Huh? I'm OK after midday. Then, it's off to a campground where things get tense. Come on! The sun's nearly gone. I'm a tent ninja, I reckon. You don't know how to put the tent up. I, I, I've got a clue. You've got no clue. I've got a tent. A just self-assembling tent. <laughs> well, how does it... What is it? Can't you just buy a tent that you go... Tent. It doesn't work. I reckon the idea of camping would be a four-star hotel. You're uncomfortable, you're dirty, you can't sleep. If I had to do it, I would do it, and I would make the most of it. I'm very adaptable. <laughs> At the end of the trip, the guides give the holiday a star rating. Nothing was great. I'll give it a one. This is a one from us. You've rated the Northern Territory a one. We're going to give it a three star rating. I mean, aren't these bitches from Newcastle? Yeah. It's not like they live in somewhere pretty. We're off. And that's it. Yeah, but there's no point going to Northern Territory and not seeing all the roof. Uluru is not in the Northern Territory, it's in the middle of Australia. And what state is that? Western Australia. It's in the Northern Territory. Next time... Oh, I'm watching it next week. The NT looks beautiful. Let's yeah. book some flights. It makes you want to go on a holiday, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. It's a $1,000 return. Do you know where else you go for a $1,000 return? Almost anywhere in the world. <laughs> Get weirdly emotional seeing the earth so in space. Do I. <gasps> what is all with that? I get really, I get a lot of perspective. I just think, yeah, we're so small. We're so small. The world is so big. I love this show. Oh, and isn't it just the most grand start ever? Imagine a world where temperatures rise to 50 degrees centigrade. I love David. Isn't he like 173? Yeah, he's been doing it for 120 okay. years. His yeah. voice is like the golden larynx, isn't it? Yeah. It's a messenger from God. Life here for a hunter is as hard as it gets. <laughs> this land is yours as far as the eye can see, Simba. Three days and 150 kilometers later, and still no kill. Where are the men lions? These are all females, aren't they? Yeah, but female lions typically hunt. According to Lion King, actually, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> the only animals here are giraffe. Who's that peeping man in the corner? <laughs> Weird, aren't they? Yeah. But this pride can't go on much longer without food. Chase is un. Oh, my God, don't eat the giraffe. That's oh, a... run! Look how fast they can run. Oh, they can move. Others race to cut off possible escape routes. This is like a police chase. It is like a police chase. Uh, we got a uh, tall-necked uh, giraffe. Where are all these giraffe friends? Doesn't matter, they've all bolted. It's being chased into a trap. Oh, no. No, no. The whole pride must work together as a team if they're to succeed. Now there's more going for it. Who are you going for? The lion. I think I'm on the giraffe side. Go lions! Giraffe shitting itself right now. Go Simba. Go Nala. Up ahead.
ahead, the lead female waits. Oh, sneaky Nala up front. It's now up to her. Pressure's on from, oh! the, from the front. It's always up to the woman. Jump, jump. Oh, oh my oh. God! <laughs> oh, good in. Oh, oh. oh. oh cop that. Bang, oh. bang, oh. bang. Oh. Cop that. Of you, babe, I think. Best fend off ever. There's his mates now. Where were they before the help? So I'd be asking, where have you been? I've been running. These lines have been after me. What have you been doing? Shit, that was so exciting. It was so good. How the hell did they get this footage? It's pretty impressive. Come on, you can't go from a lion chase to bloody looking at cactuses. A Harris hawk. What are you after? Rats? Snakes? Ground squirrels. Oh, how cute. Prey. At the first sign of danger, they bolt for the safety of the thorns. Shoot! Wow, missed him. But this squirrel is staying put. So now the hawks continue the hunt on foot. Sammy Squirrel, you're done. Here comes Hard. Harry Hawk. Hard. They're closing in from all sides. Oh, no. They're surrounding it. Oh. Don't Just stay in there, mate. Stay in make there. Make a sound. The squirrel is trapped. Oh, no. Oh, shit. Bloody hell, shit. They can see you. This is like a horror movie. Oh. Oh. Gotcha. He's dead. Just when you thought he was safe. <laughs> How life will cope here in the future remains to be seen. Do you like that one, darling? Oh, that's unreal. I can't wait. There's four parts to this. You know what? There's something soothing about watching that, don't you reckon? What, all the mass murders? It's a circle, circle of, of life. life. Cycle of life, isn't it? Circle of life. That's no, cycle of life. Circle. No, cycle. No, circle. it's a cycle. It goes for a cycle. Same bit. Do we agree to disagree that I'm right? That you're wrong. I pulled over on my bike because I ran a red light. And he's like, you know what you've done wrong? I was like, yes. How much? 380. Oh, on your bike. Did you think about doing a runner? Uh, not a chance. He's in a car, I'm on a bike. Yeah, but you know the back ways. <laughs> My favourite show. Highway Patrol. On Wednesday night, we rolled with Highway Patrol in their pursuit to make our roads safer for all. I love this show. I do too. Mick's interest has been caught by a dark Ford that keeps circling the block and revving up past the police car. What was that red circle that passed? It's the car who's revving. Why would you do that? Mick knows a hoon when he sees one. Don't Are these people sure have lives? Yeah. No, it's Bendigo, darling. Oh. I used to take my brother's Alibadaro and drag it down Ligon Street when he was asleep. Seemed to have trouble with that throttle. How old is this kid? He doesn't look like a who though, does he? He looks like about 12. Oh, look, he's such a dork as well. <laughs> Sucked in. Harry Potter. Mate, that's the sixth time you've driven past here looking for attention. You've now got it. Pop the bonnet. Oh, here we go. Your handbrake needs adjusting. This seatbelt doesn't retract. This is a car battery. How much do they weigh? Are you getting the idea here? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he's just winding him up? He's winding him up. That'll teach him for revving past the cops. This is the attention you wanted. You've now got it. Do you want it still? It's up to you. That's oh. up to you. Have a seat in there. Show it off to your girlfriend, will ya? She's on Tinder trying to get a different route. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, this one's lucked out. Yeah. Swipe left. Your pea plate. I need to be able to see it from 20 metres away. Oh, he's getting scared now. If I give you that, plus the indicator, you've just lost your licence. He's so scared. It's like, I will never drive past you again. <laughs> you don't deserve to lose your licence, right? But if you keep acting like this, you're not going to have a licence for long. Yep. The ball's in your court. That's so reasoned. That's good policing. 
It is. Oh, look, the girlfriend's gone. <laughs> she was out. No, nah, she picked up a new date. He's lucky that's all he got. I would just want to go to Bendigo and drive around and hope Mick pulls me out. <laughs> well, you like him. Yeah, I do. Senior Constable Russell Warner has spotted a car pulling out of a shopping centre with a broken taillight. Yeah, that's no big deal. It's going to be a bloody toothless redneck. I did nothing wrong, mate. I just come out of the supermarket. Look at this. No, look at this. Look at this. So what? Look, that's your wrong That, that worked, right mate. There. It worked. That guy's coming out swinging already. Yeah. Play dumb, man. You play dumb. Mate, I see... Can you not see your taillight is broken? It is broken, mate. Thank There's you. Take a seat. I'll be back in a minute. Oh, my gosh. He's going off this bloke. Mate, get in your car. I can't even hear what anyone's saying. There's just too much beeping. Mate, this is harassment. As soon as I walked in the car, you've come out and had a go. Maybe he's just angry that he wore an orange long sleeve shirt. And his orange hair. It's an angry ranger. Call him Rangry. I told you I was swearing at somebody the other day to ask him could they drive, and then we've, he's following me, and I'm thinking, all right, dickhead, follow me. We're going to have a discussion. It was my neighbour. What, the guy next door? The guy next door. <laughs> no wonder they're not talking to us. Yeah. See what I don't ever do? Yell at the police. As you can see, they're just going off their bean. Feels like it's not just the light bulb that's not working on the car, it's the light bulb upstairs for those people. Yeah. Yeah. At what stage can that poor policeman shoot him? Are you going to be much longer? Yeah, probably be another five minutes. I've got to get to Werribee Plaza. They've got a sale on bootcut jeans. <laughs> it should have been already in there that I already got pulled over ages ago. And the coppers already told me about the headline. So why haven't you so got why it, hasn't fixed? it been fixed? Uh, where do these people come from? This is our area. We oh. live here. God, I'm glad I don't live there. This driver now has two tickets coming his way. What's he gonna do when he gets this then? Oh, the language is gonna go oh. wrong. There's that. Also, you're gonna get a fine from me for using offensive language in the public. Oh, oh. Yeah. up yours, this. It won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> that won't fit. Makes you feel better about life, I reckon, when you see some of those people. No, it doesn't. No, it, doesn't. it scares me. Those people on the road's about to kill people, Dad. It makes me feel good about myself. How? Well, for one, I never ended up on the show. <laughs> <laughs>
more money you spend, the better. He's very frank. He's very frank. Frankie, how much are these? They're 200 each. 200 each. 200 each? Yeah, all right. To be right. fair, I'm not 100% right. across my gate knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that's a fair price. That feels like it's a bit expensive. They're all rusty. Price. Again, gates are important. Like, though. Price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Price. Yeah. 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 Laurie only bought these gates because he knew Dave was in the market for them. What a jerk! So he's buying junk from a junk man to sell it as a junk man. The big unknown is how much profit he's going to clear. Three eighths, twenty-four, two thousand four hundred. Right? Righto, that'll do. So you happy with that? Yeah. He made eight hundred dollars with those gates. So he bought them for two hundred, drove yep. down the street, and did. This is. I'm doing this job. I feel a lot better now. Oh, I'm pleased I've made you happy. Do they not feel guilty that they're yeah, ripping one does. person off to make a profit? Well, you want to do it. And then the two lorries go back to Laurie's so shop, where he keeps all his items. It's full of shit. He even admits that his shop's full of shit. We've got dunnies. These are the dunnies out of the Flemington race course. Bart Cummings sat on one of them. Well, I bet you he did. <laughs> I love it. Everything's for sale and everything's got a purpose. What he's got there, though, is worth Why a fortune. Why is you worth a fortune? You bring crap home all the time. But some of the stuff's out there, no, there's nothing worth it. There's nothing out there, out there worth That's anything. Not. The only reward for Laurie after a lifetime of collecting junk is the fulfilment of doing a job he loves and this. Whatever Laurie doesn't sell ends up here at his modest home. Oh, you've got to be... Fucking kidding me! What the hell? Is that Laurie's house? We are in the wrong game. His own historic village. Oh my god! He's got his own little town. Wow! And I think at the moment, he's got a train. He's got more than one. He's got 14 traction engines. Where do you get 14 of them from? Wow! How good's that, mate? That's a Laurie is taking the piss out of life. I think we might get one of them. I think it would look good driving down the west gate on one of those. <laughs> Do you know what? Wouldn't have to worry about traffic. Let it go straight over a key and no problems. How good's that, mate? That's yeah. better than sex. It's my new favourite show. That was the worst show. Well, I love it. I when I first saw him, I thought he was just an ugly Aussie bloke. But after oh, seeing yeah. his house and everything, he looks very handsome to me. <laughs> I might ring him. I was in the supermarket and then there was the man behind me and he had nine five-litre containers of olive oil and 75 dozen eggs. I just kept looking at him thinking, what on earth could you be doing with 75 dozen eggs? He's going to make some sort of egg and oil bomb or something. If I see him again down there, I will ask him. Just ask him how the omelette went. Fix me, make me beautiful. This week, we watched Botched. I want to be perfect. I oh, see so it's going to be about bad cosmetic surgery. Botched stars plastic surgeons Terry Dubro and Paul Nassif. God, I know if I like the look of these two. I don't think I'd want them touching my face. The doctor's first patient is Lucy, who wants her nose fixed. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Do you see what they called her? Lucy Flat Face. That was the description of her. The plan for Lucy's surgery is... Unusually for the doctors, Lucy's nose wasn't botched, but flattened in a motorcycle accident. Michael Jackson had a nose like hers, didn't he? Yeah, he paid to have a nose like hers. OK, you ready? Pull down. Oh, I can't do this. Sorry, can't watch. Contouring the bony dorsal graft. Tell me when he's, it's finished. He's just got the knife in his Oh, don't, 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 don't. There's don't, blood don't. going everywhere. Oh, I'm sure there is. No, I don't want to see that. Part, part of the nose. Oh, no, 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 no. How can you watch that? I like surgery. The reason why the skin flat... Have they gone yet? No. All right, that's over. Oh. The next patient is Leslie, who has botched breast implants. My breast started to sag. The doctor put in saline implants. God, oh, they're monstrous, aren't they? Look. One looks like a watermelon. And the other's a mango. Healthy. I still have the same problem, but now it's just much worse. She and her partner, Angie, hope the doctors can fix them. Are you together together? Yeah. He can cut us 
questions like that. That is not ethical. I would be so insulted. Yeah. Well, it couldn't sound more yeah. creepy if he tried. But yes, we are lesbians. <laughs> you had your breast done and yeah. had a great result. Yeah. You had your breast done, didn't have a great result. It's a different kind of situation. Yeah, I when definitely you're understand. If I was a lesbian, I would like that girl to be exactly like me. I'd want my partner to be ugly for me. <laughs> I would want her just to be a nice, funny human. I wouldn't want her to look something. But I'd also want her to have massive tits. <laughs> so this is like a small D. If you want to be a small C, there'll be a little more scars. You're a double C. <laughs> huh? No. A C. No. A B. No. An A. No. A D. No. no. What else is there? A, B, C, and E. Yes. Bullshit. Oh, yes. I love you. Going into today's surgery, I'm feeling excited. I'm feeling hopeful. Is that her name, Leslie Chichotas? It means big ass boobs in Spanish. <laughs> okay. Take the implant out. Look how big that bag is. That was in a boob. Is that normal, man? It's a jellyfish. No. What is that? The implants. Implants. So that's not what it's I've like got. It's like jelly. No, that you haven't got implants, you've got boobs. After inserting the breast implants, it's all about the breast lift. Oh, they're you know, putting it in a boob. That's disgusting. Those are really pretty and really pretty even, too. This is great. With Leslie recovering, it's time for Lucy to see how her nose looks. Oh, flat face. Not so flat anymore. I'm actually really looking forward to seeing her face, hey? I reckon it'll be good. Hello, young lady. Hi. How are you? Oh, I get a hug. Here goes bang and breaks her nose again. All right, so let me take this off. Okay. <gasps> oh, oh this nose. What the hell have they done to that woman? I don't know if I know. Because you are going to have to see this to clean it. What's that thing coming out the side there? It looks like a big boogie king in a nose. That doesn't look better than what it was. Shit, get me the phone. I'm calling that bitch a lawyer. Since it's going to be on for about three weeks. Okay. Oh, so it's the skin graft, and then they get rid of that skin and use it. Oh, okay. Can you handle that? Yes, I'm good. She wouldn't want to get a left blocked nostril, would she? No Stop more jokes about jokes. This is serious. Next, Leslie gets to see her new chichotas. Oh, calm down, partner. Okay. Thank now God. we can celebrate a little yeah. bit. Oh, my God. Wow. I do look good. I'm just ready to finally give myself 100%. 100% just because your titties are different. As long as she's happy. And she's feel more confident going out. It's been three weeks since Lucy's operation, and now her family is looking forward to seeing her new nose. The luckiest person. Well, you won't be when you see the, the snake that's coming no, out well, of her nostril. Hopefully it's cut off by then, Mum. I have an actual nose. That Nothing beats a happy ending. <laughs> it's amazing science, isn't it? That show was creepy. I'm never watching that again. Have you ever considered plastic surgery, mate? What for? <laughs> well, something why, about why, your why nose that's five times the size that it used to be. Well, it's been broken about five or six times. Yes, but it affects your, your breathing. Don't have a problem breathing. <sighs> what, talking about moody? <sighs> snoring. Snoring. What about you? I do not snore. <laughs> How many bad hair colours have I had? Oh. What was your... Which one did you hate the most? The, oh, fucking... The peroxide blonde. More than the purple? Oh, you looked like bras back in the 80s. Do you know, I only did it because I was going to the sing-along Sound of Music and I dressed as Ralph. I know. And I said, don't do it. And you went, I'm going to do it. I want to be Ralph. And then you almost cried when you saw it. Yeah, I didn't like it. <laughs> Undercover Boss. boss. I love this show. What is so it doing? basically, one of the big bosses, so a CEO, yeah. goes in as an employee and they don't know that he's the big boss. In the UK alone, we are spending £5 billion a year on how we look. £5 billion. I'm telling you what, I'm a hairdresser and hairdressers make none of that money. In this episode, the boss of hairdressing franchise, the Francesco Group, is worried about the performance of a number of its salons. He's sending senior manager Jackie McIntosh undercover to find out where they're going wrong. Why didn't the boss go? Undercover... Second in line. Second in line. Undercover senior manager. <laughs> Jackie is going undercover as an ex-hairdresser who wants to return to the shop floor. Yeah, could I go undercover? Would I have to have hair? Would I have he to put a wig on? stupid with hair. And I walk in and go... <laughs> 
honest opinion of her. Get out of the way, bitches. I'm here to work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, she does look the part. She's got a wig on, that's it. Jackie's ready to put her cleverly crafted disguise into practice at the first salon on her hit list. When did you start then? About five years ago. I reckon you'd be suspect. If they're hairdressers and they know what they're talking about, they shouldn't realise they're wearing a wig. It's not long before Jackie spots a problem. I'm quite shocked at the age group that's here. I just think maybe we might not be attracting the young 20 to 16-year-old. What's oh. wrong with old people? I used to love the Friday night nana sets where they come in and they get their hair put in rollers and you just tease the shit out of it and for a week they leave it like that. They don't wash it. 66-year-old <laughs> franchisee Ian inherited the hairdressing business from his father. How long have you been hairdressing? 50... One years in August. He looks like he's falling asleep as he talks to her. I still enjoy hairdressing. I must. Oh, I, I really love hairdressers. People don't realise how, how much energy you do need in a day. He doesn't look driven. Yeah, and he's not going to be bringing anything new, anything fresh. It's a hard life on your feet. It's a hard knock life for us. Do you know how many times I sung Annie in there while I was cleaning the floor? Today, she's going to a franchise which, despite being one of the oldest in the chain, is seeing rising profits every month. Oh, what are they doing differently? See, this looks like a buzzing salon, doesn't it? It's like our hairdresser. We can't get in. Jackie discovers the salon's success has come at a cost. Some days you can just have no gaps at all, and if it's like that, then you don't really get a chance to have some lunch. <gasps> oh, Jesus. Is it just because you booked in so solidly? I think you solidly? just booked in so solidly. That's not right. This is the secret. One of the downsides is starvation. Jackie confronts salon manager Kevin. In hairdressing, you do get natural gaps, and people then go and grab something to eat. It doesn't happen all the time. Kevin, you dickheads. But well. a salon owner doesn't care. You're on lunch, someone walks in, wants a haircut, they just look at that as more money. Yeah. Now it's time for Jackie to drop the disguise. She looks better undercover than she does <laughs> regularly. Do you recognise me? <laughs> You look so different. I've been here the whole time. Oh, look how red he's going. He's thinking, what have I said to her? One of the things we are going to do across the whole group is look at the schedule for timing for staff to have breaks. I, I totally agree. If you totally agree, my lucker, why don't you give him a break, a good idiot? No, he only agrees now because, because he knows who she day. is. Next to face the music is salon manager Ian. Oh, uh-oh. Oh, he shouldn't be there. He should be out playing bowls or doing something. Oh, Lauren, what we would like to offer you is to help you sell on your franchise. That sounds good. Will help you sell the business. So she just politely fired him. Anybody, anybody that steps in your shoes, they're going to pick up something that's very good. Thank you. I didn't even notice. <laughs> I wonder if he even <laughs> realised. <laughs> realize it's something I really wanted. But... You were fired! <laughs> I want them to start smacking the, the boss's mat. Yeah. That was really polite. I wanted the juice. We're going to take on board what has been discovered and make a great change. My hairdresser, the Happy Sailor, they've got vintage Playboys. They're from the 60s, and they're, they're, they're fascinating. This is now, sounding is weirder so by the minute. It's full of cigarette... Call the Happy Sailor. Full of cigarette ads. And they've got porno magazines. What kind well, of place is this? I'm going to say Playboy, you wouldn't... Oh, my God. This is, sounds like a, this is like a den of iniquity. I don't think you should be going back there, Mick. I think it's good for you. Do you guys remember how it was to come to Australia, Mum? Dad? The real reason we came out was because of the, the trouble in, in Sri Lanka. There was a war going on because of that, and you were a baby, so we decided for your future to migrate. Australia is the land of opportunity. Ah, oh, one of our favourite shows. Australian story. It's always going to be good. Oh, this one's about an Iranian refugee girl who went to school in Queensland. Moshgan's story before she came to Australia, it is horrendous uh, what happened to her. Mushgan told me she was beaten by the stepfather. What sort of a father would torture his kids? In the age of 15, Mushgan got raped by her stepfather. Oh. 
she was accused of being immoral, which is a crime over there. See, that's scary. These women don't have any rights. So she was painted. It was just, it was her fault. So the stepfather went right. Your your name is Mud. We need to get you married. I've got a friend of mine who can marry you, and that was a man in his late fifties. And if you don't marry this man, you'll be cast out. Well, she's like sixteen, and the bloke's over fifty-five. Moshgan's mother actually said to her, go, just get out of the country. Moshgan and her brother then uh, made this arduous trip by boat to Australia. How brave. So they kept, she's come over on the boat, on boats. So illegally? Yeah, but didn't know any other way. She was detained in Christmas Island and then finally released on a bridging visa. Once she had a bridging visa, Moshgan settled into Australian life. You feel so sorry for those people in their situation. Oh, it sucks. Nobody it's deserves what they've been horrible. through. Yeah, but in the end, we've got, you know, all our infrastructure's just struggling. We can't keep taking people in. Simple as that. She went to school, fell in love, and married Millard, a refugee permanently settled in Australia. We were truly happy together. It was the best days of our life. Can you imagine how good they must feel best being safe? Mm. You know, to be able to fall in love with someone you want. No, no. My family, I would say, love Mojkan more than myself, even. I feel like something really bad's going to happen in the story in a minute. Yeah, there's something bad coming. This is like the Jaws music. The refugee tribunal decided that her case for asylum was not legitimate and that she could not be... Um, be settled in Australia as a person seeking asylum. Why is this happening? Individual cases like this aren't under the Protection Act. Because she wasn't persecuted by the government, she doesn't class as yeah. a political refugee. Yeah. But hasn't she got, like, a green card because she's married him? Where an Australian permanent resident is married to an overseas national, they're allowed to sponsor them to remain in Australia as their family unit. Unless you've arrived as an illegal or on a boat. Then the only way in which they can apply for any visa in Australia is by the minister's intervention. She's done nothing wrong. She came on a boat. That's yeah. considered to be something wrong. Other people come in and go through the proper channels. You can't have one rule for one person and one rule for another. You know, how do you systematically grade people's desperation? They told Moshkin that she needed to go back into detention in Brisbane. It was so hard for me to believe that this is actually happening. How fucking ridiculous. Just doesn't make sense to keep someone so young just sitting in detention. I, I couldn't stop it. So that was really distressing. While they're going through all the bureaucracy or whatever they have to do to figure out if she's allowed here or not, they're keeping her in jail? The first thing they said, you cannot hug inside that facility. You cannot touch each other that much. You cannot kiss. Why can't she hug and give him a kiss? How can you treat someone like that? He's not a criminal. In September last year, finally, there was some hope. The Minister for Immigration and Border Protection has uh, finally exercised his discretionary non compellable powers to grant Mushgan a bridging visa. It was unbelievable. There she is. And they opened the door and they said, you're free to go. I couldn't believe this. We walked out. I saw Milad. It was like a miracle. For two years, I was waiting for that moment. Two years. Yeah. You would just want to give up, wouldn't you? It's very important in life yeah, that you don't give up. Here. That's cute. It is cute. Seeing Milad's mom like that really broke me. Seeing that she's broken, she was really broken. What's sad? It is sad, actually. <laughs> You're gonna cheer up to, to love between yeah. the family, between the husband freedom. and wife. And <laughs> also, last thing is to freedom. Freedom doesn't come to everybody easily at all. We're lucky to be born into it, but a lot yeah. of people have to fight for that freedom. Yeah. She has a bridging visa. They only last for three months, and when the next date comes up, we don't know if she'll get another bridging visa or not. Living in limbo, isn't it? Yeah. You never know what's going to happen. How long have I got? Never had a dream in a long time. 
school, she hasn't got access to a permanent visa stay. <gasps> what does that mean? What does that mean? If Australia kicks her out, Iran won't accept her back. So she's just going to keep being in limbo? Detention indefinitely for the rest of your life. Yeah. People just watch this and think, oh, that's such a sad story, what a poor girl, and then move on and do everything they've been doing. That's fine. shouldn't move on. No, it's not fine. No. Australian story need to have a number. Who do we call? What do we do now? We have to be the voice for the voiceless.